Hey YouTube, this is Dark Strike Duelists, and you can probably tell this is definitely not my living room. I kind of want to try something a little bit different today and do a video outside. It's a pretty nice day outside, and you know I'm always in my living room, so I figured why not do a video outside for a change. No, I'm not trying to copy anyone's style or anything. I just wanted to try something a little bit new. If you guys don't like it, I won't do it anymore in the future, but I thought it'd be kind of a cool little change up or something. So as you guys have noticed, I've been doing a lot of deck profiles since I went to YCS Dallas. You know, I went to a regional in Vegas, so I've been getting like a lot of uh, coverage and stuff so we're gonna go back and do some discussion videos now because I haven't done a discussion video in a while um, I've been pretty busy with school just giving you guys a quick life update but everything's pretty cool I've been trying to balance out videos school and you know uh, but it's all been fun you know I've really been enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh lately like I've been really motivated ever since I saw a lot of you guys at Dallas I'm like wow like this YouTube thing is just like really fun in order to like just get to meet new, new people and like I just really appreciate it of you guys so you guys keep me going thank you for the motivation uh, quick note a lot of you have still not gained, uh, have not sent me your info if you are one of the winners for the prizes. I've actually only been in contact with one of the winners. Uh, so if you guys don't contact me, I'm going to have to pull new winners this weekend because I said I would do it this weekend. Uh, but I didn't. I'm, so I'm one week late already and I really want to get people their prizes. So please send me your information if you are a winner. Uh, you can get the results on a video that is probably like, I would say a couple weeks ago it's been a while so just go back in my channel and it's titled contest results or something along those lines so you guys can get your prizes anyway uh we're going to be talking about the top 10 decks of the october 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 2014 format uh the reason why i did top 10 instead of top 5 is because i feel like top 3 are already taken up by decks that you guys already know so there's really no point in doing top 5 so i'm going to be doing top 10 uh please remember that uh, these decks are not uh, like for sure like they're just my opinion if you disagree with my list or want to make uh, your own feel free to post that in the comments below that's the point of discussion video in order to promote discussion uh, so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get into the list and yeah let's get started so number I'm pretty sure we all know one two and three but I'm, we're still gonna discuss it um, number one being Shadal uh, Shadal's uh, sorry my hair keeps going in my face um, Shadal's are an interesting deck we saw them at their a very beginning awkward stages uh, where nobody really knew like a definite list to play them with. Um, you see, Shadows were always those decks that people knew were going to be really good. We just didn't know how to play it right. Um, and then after like a couple events, we started seeing like defined variants like Chaos, Light Sworn. Uh, there's the pure version that just runs like Mathematician and stuff. And you know, there's a multiple ways to run the deck. And I think that's what makes the deck so good is because there's so many ways to run in. The deck provides like just so much you can do and it's a really good deck uh but you guys already know about that second deck is burning abyss burning abyss two words chainable traps uh i guess three words chainable trap cards uh that's what makes the deck really like the deck the original problem i had about uh with it is i feel like it didn't have a real win condition it was kind of just like summon dante set a trap you know go uh but i feel like the deck is still really good at what it does and like just drawing traps and just maintaining board presence and all the fact that all the monsters are floaters uh so that's why the deck is really good and then Satellar knight's my personal favorite um it's just it's good at what it does you know it does floodgates it's very consistent it can abuse castell very easily and castell is a very popular card this format because it handles birth uh, both Burning Abyss and Shadal, so that's why Satellar Knights are good, and that's pretty much for our top three. Um, the rest of the car, the rest of the decks are not really in order by like any like means. They're just kind of just there for us to discuss. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. So we have Mermails. Now Mermails. The reason why I like Mermails is because I feel like there's so much variety in the plays you can make. I can never say that word. Var variety. There we go. Variety. Variety. Um, the deck can also be very aggressive, which I feel like the top three decks kind of lack. You know, Shadals can play very aggressively, uh, especially in the Lightsworn variant. However, I feel like unless you're playing like Lightsworns, uh, that kind of just like sits on a monster and gains like slow advantage by like flipping and like getting stuff off of fusion and popping your cards with dragon and stuff. Uh, we lack very aggressive decks this format. So uh, Mermails are very aggressive. You know, they can take you by the surprise and do things like OTK. So that's pretty cool too. Um, and Mermails have always been a good deck. You know, the only problem with it though is because... Uh, it, the decks right now have a better grind game than Mermails because the thing is that usually like one one card in Shadal like for example BLS Fusion you know those Saki cards can do more than just like one Mermail you know Mermails have to work together so they usually require like more complicated game states so once you get down to the grind game you can really lose the decks especially like Shadal's Burning Abyss uh, even Satellar Knights which have like basically their own wolf bark um, then we have Modolshai 
Madoshe is our deck that I think are very underrated. Uh, I think you have to play the deck a certain way for sure. You can't just be expecting to like summon uh, Magellan and win. Uh, you definitely have to play it a certain way, but I think that deck is also very underrated and definitely in the top 10. Uh, Dragon Ruler variants. Now, Dragon Rulers kind of lost uh, power with Soul Charge going to 1. However, the deck is still very strong. Uh, when I say Dragon Ruler variants, I'm just going to go ahead and include Heretics, uh, Light Sworn Rulers, you know, just all of that because I don't want to take up a bunch of spaces and top for different Dragon variants. Uh, the deck can also run this card called Kwakumeru Drago, which is ridiculous right now. Uh, the, that card is just good against like every deck right now and the thing is that um against things like shadows um really you have no out to it unless you either draw like squamata or you like clash with it or something but it's really hard to get over that card especially late game uh so drago is just ridiculous um fire fist now fire fist is not uh, a deck i wanted to put too high on my list to be honest like I don't think it's I definitely don't think it's uh as good as it was during plus one format however I think it does deserve some credit just in the fact that like tanky is just ridiculously good still um and the ability to keep the deck consistent you know wolf bark is still a good card and it can also it's also a deck that uh can abuse castell pretty well um but the thing is that bear's popping ability isn't that great right now since everything's a floater so it really isn't like too great however deck I still think deserves a spot uh with wolf bark going to three our next deck is a prophecy now prophecy is a deck i feel like it's so good but it loses to itself you know the deck has a big problem with bricking uh, especially if you go first now with five cards that even reduces your chance of drawing magician or secrets or crest and whatever first turn uh but if you go second you know you still have your six cards and the deck is still really good you know fate's still a really good card um a couple i think two prophecies decks did top ycs dallas so that was pretty cool you know the deck is still good uh fate is pretty good against the fusions and dante you know uh but unfortunately they only have one fate and a car just drives by. I'm pretty sure every car that drives by thinks I'm a weirdo for sitting on the floor and talking to my phone. Um, next deck is Evil Swarm. This is actually our ninth deck, I believe. Evil Swarm, I don't even need to explain this. Like, that deck always managed to just, like, manages to, like, peek up somewhere in the top tables. You know, like, there's always that one person who opens up, like, rabbit every game and, like, five back row, you know? Like, it, it, it's just, it's just dumb. Like, I gotta give people credit for that deck though because it is good against like the meta you know I guess it shuts down Shadals in a way but like you know that deck is just so savage sometimes like I played against that deck at regionals and I was actually pretty scared uh, especially since they have a pretty good side deck because they can basically side like all the good side deck cards so that deck uh, is something to watch out for for you know but it's definitely one of the more linear decks so it's not that hard to beat but you know sometimes it's one of those decks where you can't really control if they draw like super well and you brick you know they're actually going to outgrind you. Um, and our last deck, which I really want to talk about, is Girgia. Now, Girgia was a deck that I probably went to put uh, too high on the list before because it kind of, like, lost viability, especially for the fact that if you go Girgia and they shoot off Fusion, you're probably just going to minus a bunch. Um, well, you don't really minus, but they're just going to gain a bunch of advantage on you. But with the release of Augur, I think the deck is still pretty decent. Um, we saw, if you guys watched the stream from uh, ARG Iowa, uh, you saw a couple... Uh, Gear Gear decks up there. I think two made top 16. Don't quote me on that, but I know one for sure. I think two made it. Um, and the thing I like about Gear Gear is it's still a, one of the best grind decks in the game. Now with Augur, it can uh, make basically instant rank four even faster. Uh, and then you can run things like the hands. And the hands aren't necessarily that good because they are very reactive cards. However, I feel like if you if your opponent has to struggle, you know what like the fact that you don't always have to set armor you know like if you're um playing you can bluff an armor and you set in hand and then your opponent's gonna play around an armor like for example if they're playing burning abyss and they make an ayu card to pop your armor and it's something like a fire hand instead you know they're probably gonna be at a much lesser advantage uh than they were previously you know if they made dante or something so you know the deck is full of surprises um i definitely don't think it's like tier one or anything but i definitely think uh if the right player plays it it can do some pretty good damage however i feel like it's also one of those decks where in a couple weeks people are basically going to learn how to play around it and it won't uh do as well but for the first couple of days especially with the release of the structure deck i think it's a pretty decent deck too and it's pretty budget now which i really like because i encourage decks uh to be budget for players in order for everyone uh to get to play competitively and then since uh excite on and 101 are reprinted that makes the deck even cheaper so hey that's cool too but anyway, guys, uh, yeah, that is my top 10 list. There were a couple other decks I wanted to include. I really wanted to include Bujin, too. 
Uh, but like Bujin, Fire Fist, and Evil Swarm all kind of tied in a way. Like I didn't really know like where to put it, and I really want to talk about uh, the other decks. So I didn't put Bujin on here, but I think it probably deserves a spot. And there's a multiple of different decks too. So let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comments below. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video outside. I hope it wasn't too awkward for you or anything. But remember to leave your feedback uh, down below. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you later, YouTube. Hey guys, if you would like to stay in touch with me, please check out my social networking websites as well as multi-monster deals for awesome coverage and articles. But anyway guys, I will see you later. Bye!